Hey everybody, um, kind of another impromptu live. Um, today I'm going to be showing you uh, kind of a quick way to paint like armor for like fantasy characters or kind of like like knight characters, like that kind of armor. I don't know what other kind of armor uh, you would be trying to paint. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through a process. Um, so I'll just kind of hop into that. Um, so I've just kind of roughed out a body. Um, and kind of, I guess, I'm just going to be doing this character, uh, his armor, and kind of talking through my process of how I would go about doing that, um, relatively quickly. Um, I'm just going to kind of group what I've done already. Alright, um, and kind of talk through what I'm doing, kind of as I go about that. Um, so you can kind of check check out over on um, Instagram and Facebook at Anthony James Rich Art. I've been kind of doing daily character studies. So this is kind of the way I've been painting the armor for that. Um, and it's also just kind of a relatively quick way um, just to kind of rough in armor. Um, so just so we're not distracted by like fancy brushes or anything like that, I'm literally only using one brush for this. Um, and that is just a, a hard round brush. Um, and I'm going to just vary the opacity of that. So it's a brush that literally everyone has. It's the default brush in most programs. Um, all right, again, so we have this body set up. Um, so the first step is we're going to basically just create a silhouette for the armor. Um, so this is where you're actually kind of designing the armor. Um, so you want to kind of think, you know, what kind of armor your character is going to be wearing, you know, why they would be wearing this armor, how they would, you know, come upon this armor. Um, so I think when a lot of people think of like fantasy armor, they, they go immediately to like, um, like plate mail. Let me just... So they think of things like this, and I just literally googled uh, plate mail. So it's important to kind of keep in mind, like this type of stuff might look cool, and some of it is even historic, but there was no point anywhere in the world where this was like the default type of armor that a large number of people wore. So even if you were wearing armor that was like consisting of metal plates, like, it wouldn't be this horribly complex interlocking set of armor. Um, the chances are you just have kind of plates covering vital organs, so you'd have, like, something more like this. Kind of like a breastplate, maybe some shoulder guards, maybe some metal plates and, and bracers. Something more like this. Um, but as they get kind of more ornate, Keep in mind, they also get more expensive. And a lot of these sets of armor weigh like hundreds of pounds, require an entire team just to get them on your body. So if your character is an adventurer, it doesn't make sense that they would carry around a 200 pound set of armor that requires a team of five people to put on their body. Um, or even if your character is any sort of like lone operative of any sort, like unless they're nobility, and they have a retinue to kind of armor them, um, then this type of armor is probably not going to be, is not going to make sense for that character. Uh, similar if they're from a society that um, doesn't have access to a lot of metal. Um, so if you look at like armor in Japan, You know, this is mostly made of, like, wood and lacquer and other materials just because the, the island of Japan doesn't have access to as plentiful metal resources as, like, Europe does. So they save their metals for, 
you know, making swords and things that need to be metal and most of their armor is made out of other materials. I'm not going to try to draw, draw Japanese armor for you today though, because I'm not a masochist. Um, say it, Brownie. Oh, I'm, I'm basically just going to be drawing armor on this character. It's kind of like, yeah, I'm just kind of talking through my process for drawing armor and then I'll, I'll draw armor. Which I guess I could be drawing while I'm talking. Um, anyway, that whole diversion aside, you just want to kind of think through um, kind of what kind of armor your character would wear, kind of what position they're in, why would they would be wearing that armor, things like that. Um, you also probably wouldn't be wearing like armor with a lot of metal in it if you're in a place that was very, very hot. Uh, or very very cold because um, you know metal conducts or metal cools a lot faster in the air. So if you're in like a like an Arctic area, you probably wouldn't be want to wear want to be wearing a lot of metal unless there's a lot of padding between the metal and you. Um, so on to the actual drawing. Um, I don't really I haven't really planned this out, so I'm just going to be noodling around. Um, So basically what I'm doing is I'm just blocking out a silhouette of like where the chunks of armor are going to be. Um, so I'm kind of working out a breastplate. Um, and this is on a separate layer so I can kind of trim it. Um, and this is probably not the best pose for this now that I think about it because you can't see the edges of the breastplate. but. Um, and then you can kind of add shoulder pieces. Um, and what I'm kind of going for is kind of like just like a guardian knight kind of character. Um, so it's going to be pretty kind of as close to kind of generic fantasy armor that you've probably seen in a lot of video games. We'll try to make it a little bit interesting. But again, the, the main focus of the stream is kind of just drawing armor quickly. Um, so we're going to make it a little bit asymmetrical, just because I think that tends to look better. Uh, yeah, I'm super new. I haven't streamed I, since the pandemic, basically. I've only been streaming since the pandemic. Right. So another thing you want to kind of think about as you're designing armor is like how the armor actually attaches to the person. Um, and you'll see more of that in later steps. Right now we're just kind of blocking out the silhouette. So we want to get a good idea of like just how, how everything rests on the character. Um, right now it's kind of random times. Um, I don't have a set streaming schedule at the moment just because I have so much going on. Um, I used to be able to, I used to stream like the middle of the day and I just got a, a new job that, where I, I basically work in the middle of the day. So it's pretty sporadic. All right, so I'm thinking we're just going to have like kind of um, a shoulder and chest piece that could kind of go on, go on over the head, um, and then some gloves, and that's going to be kind of the main like kind of metallic parts. Um, And then maybe a helmet um, of some sort. 
do kind of the that type of helmet. Eh. We'll not include a helmet for this guy, just I kind of like the, the helmetless look. And I'll also kind of go ahead and add the uh, kind of greaves down here. Okay, so the reason why we kind of just did this and kind of blocked out the general shape of the armor is now we can just um, kind of select that and it'll make kind of adding the kind of metal effects to it a little more easier. Uh, so there's a few ways you can kind of um, go from here. Um, if you just hit, I believe it's control and click And click the layer um, then it'll just select the contents of that layer and now um, you're kind of confined to the space you set up for armor so you can go up and get kind of you know a different color and kind of uh, turn down the opacity of your brush and now you don't have to worry about going out of the lines and you can kind of block in details that way or kind of the lighting that way um, so that works in Photoshop. I don't know if it works in other programs. Um, another thing you can do is create a new layer and just create a clipping mask. So anything you do will only kind of go to the bounds of the layer that that layer is clipped to. Um, so again, you can either hit control and click the layer to select the contents or create a clipping mask. Um, I tend to use clipping masks just because, but... Is it better now? So I'm being told that my audio is bad. Okay, so you can hear me now. I might have just started mumbling. <gasps> Entirely possible. All right. So just to reiterate, I'm just using a hard round brush. Um, just for the purposes of demonstrating. Um, so now that I have my clipping mask or my selection, I'm just going in and kind of adding a light source. Um, we'll say that the light source is coming from roughly that direction. Um, and then we can kind of pull out elements and kind of add in more detail and we can do all this relatively quickly because we don't have to worry about like going outside of the lines or anything like that and we don't have to be super precious with it so we just kind of want to think like where is the light going to be hitting and kind of make sure we're kind of shading things appropriately. This is probably the hard part because this is something that's going to require a lot of trial and error if you're not super familiar with like creating forms. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Faye. So again, you don't need any special brushes. There's no like magical trick to it. It really is just kind of limiting. It's an elaborate way to kind of limit your selection. Or it's using, it's basically just using a clipping mask to limit your selection so that you can add details to the armor without having to repaint everything around it. Um, and then a lot of it is also repeating this process. So like once I've kind of gotten the big shapes of the armor roughed in, like if I wanted to go in and add like, you know, gold filigree or some other like really fancy looking stuff to the armor, um, if it was more of a kind of a wealthy person or if it was like a, you know, just a fancier piece of armor or something like that, um, then I could go in um, and just use a another layer, kind of block out all the filigree, and then again use a clipping mask or a layer selection in order to get that area um, to add all of the highlights and shadows and stuff to that filigree work. All right, we should probably do something with the rest of the character, too, at some point. All right, so I've been live for less than 18 minutes. We've already kind of got this armor roughed in, and I spent a good chunk of that time uh, showing you random Google pictures of armor. So again, just to recap, kind of drawing armor quickly, kind of sketch out the pose of your character, figure out what kind of armor you want to draw, then just kind of block out the silhouette of that armor, um, and then use Control and select the layer, um, to create a selection of just the armor bits and then add details or if you don't want to do that you can also use a clipping mask and that allows you to kind of block in armor really really fast um, works for just about anything it doesn't have to be armor this is also how I draw like if someone has like necklaces or jewelry or even like tattoos and I want to kind of add highlights or shadows or, or something like that kind of going around other objects um, kind of drawing it out like this and then cr using a clipping mask or a selection um, is a super quick way to do that so for example um, like if I wanted to give him like a little circlet you know I could draw a little circle here and just kind of make sure it goes around his head And then kind of once I have the shape I want, I can just control select that that layer. And then I can like make it whatever color I want. Like if I want it to be gold, I can go in and kind of, you know, again with my light coming from this direction, kind of make it like gold looking.
you know, and that's kind of quick and dirty, but it's basically that simple. It's just taking more time at each at each step. Right. So I guess that kind of concludes the the educational portion of this stream. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to finish painting this character now. Um, so I'm going to use a few of my other brushes. Um, they're nothing special, nothing like noteworthy. I don't know, I, I feel like people are really preoccupied with brushes. I'm also going to kind of um, draw around this armor a bit so it's not on its own layer. Um, this is also handy, so like now I have all the armor on one layer that I can turn off and on. Uh, so if you like wanted to design a character with multiple outfits or something like that, you know, now all of your armor is on separate layers or in separate groups if it's really complicated, um, and you have an easy way to kind of, you know, do that. Um, I'm not going to be doing that with this guy because this is just one of my daily characters. So I basically just want to kind of finish him out, um, bring him up to the level that my other characters are at. So I'm going to go below the armor real quick and add just some shadows. That's super weird. Okay. Um... I'm going to clip these shadows to the group that has the character in it. Also, going to kind of add some some details to kind of his pants there. And kind of start bringing up. the rendering on his arms. And now I'm going to kind of group together everything I've done so far. I'm going to remove the background. Um, I'm going to hit Control Shift Copy, um, and then Control V. Oh no! That was apparently on my clipboard from yesterday, for some reason. Okay, select all, then Control Shift Copy, and then Control V. So if you hit shift while you're hitting control C, um, it basically will copy everything that's visible to the clipboard as opposed to just the layer you're on. And that way you can save like all of the information you have here, but you'll still have the character all in the same layer to do adjustments.
And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And start kind of working up this face a little bit. And I guess we'll give him a beard. Because you don't get a lot of... Sorry, you don't get a lot of questing knights who have like time to shave every morning. And we'll kind of add some like paradoxically shaved head stuff going on. And I usually use like a chalkier brush for armor just because it makes it look a little bit more um, weathered. So it just kind of creates some natural texture. So it looks a little bit banged up. So you also want to kind of think about how the armor is actually like connected. So with large chunks like this um, shoulder piece, like it makes sense that the majority of the connective material would be under the plate. So um, just like behind here, there'd probably be a strap of leather or two that like connects it to the breastplate, something like that. You also kind of want to think about that with the sides of your armor. Um, is a lot of these, there's like a front piece and a back piece. And then there's like little straps on the sides that kind of connect them together. Um, and that makes the armor like a little bit more adjustable. Um, and it also just makes it easier um, to get the armor on and off. If you have a solid piece like this, which goes over the head, make sure it's actually, you know, big enough to fit over the head. So it should kind of be a little further out from the body. So you can kind of picture, you know, um, like this whole thing is like one big piece and you have like kind of your shoulder pads with dress on your shoulders and you have like a front piece and a back piece. So, you know, this whole thing just goes over your character's head. Um, and then you just kind of strap it, strap the sides. And that would allow the character to take the armor on and put it off with relative ease. So it's a good kind of like adventurer type of armor. Um, and this kind of setup is so, I guess, basic that you can kind of style the armor any way you like. Um, and it'll it'll make sense.
So, like, if you wanted, like, I don't know, whatever designs or kind of segments or plates or however fancy you wanted to make it, um, you know, if you kind of keep that in mind, just, like, shoulder pads, front piece, back piece, straps, it's a pretty kind of simple design for plate armors. Adding a bit of a highlight there to pop that section forward. This is actually kind of narrow. Um, so I'm going to open this in another window. Alright. Just going to pull this guy off. Set that over there so you can kind of see the full character when I zoom in. Uh... I might actually go ahead and reduce the size of this as well. That should make my computer work less hard.
Go ahead and add a few rivets here and there. And that's more of like a design choice than it is like authentic, like because you can you can easily hide that in like handmade armor, like. You don't need to be able to see the rivets where it's like held together. I mean, it would probably be cheaper if you could, like it cheaper to show them than to hide them. But okay. Um, and you'd probably want some protection on your legs and thighs. So, um, like a lot of pieces of armor will have like the breastplate, the shoulder plates, this is a front view. Um, and then we'll have some like kind of thigh guards that come down that like hang basically from the breastplate and kind of strap onto the legs. Um, so that's one way you can go. Um, a lot of breastplates kind of have a bit of a flare at the bottom like this. Um, and that way if you're like you know, hitting a sword, it goes to the chest and then down and then is deflected away from the body like that. Um, so let's go ahead and add one of those because we don't want our dude, you know, getting his legs chopped off. That would not not be ideal. Um, anyway, so another option other than kind of having leg plates would it be to have like um, some sort of like leather kind of hanging bits. And you see these on like, you know, kind of stereotypical kind of Roman armor, but just kind of having some harder material to kind of protect your legs that isn't as heavy and doesn't like hinder your movement as much as like giant metal plates on your legs would. Um, so we're going to go with that in this instance. Um, and I think we're going to actually kind of go with a greenish color scheme for this guy. So we'll have kind of like dyed green leather for his kind of, I don't know what it's called officially, but I'm going to call it like a war skirt. I don't know. It probably has a name that I'm just not aware of. Kind of going back in and throwing some shadow on that. I'm also going to just thin this a little bit because like it looks like that metal is like a half inch thick and one I mean steel doesn't need to be half an inch thick to stop another piece of steel like swung with human power like it's just excessive. So it would likely be like pretty thin, pretty thin stuff. Um, I'm also going to get rid of this hard seam and kind of try to paint a change in plane. Which is a little bit hard to do, but... So, rather than it being like two different pieces, they're kind of blended together. That's what I'm going for anyway. So hopefully that, that reads that way. Okay, so I'm going to bring some of this green up.
So he'd probably have something on underneath the armor. Um, just because, you know, giant plates of metal on your skin doesn't feel super great. So I'm just kind of... Bringing that green up to kind of show that. Kind of knock that down a little bit. Um, silver also tends to take on colors around it. So in places where like green is nearby, you know, you'd want to kind of just add a little of that into the armor, and that'll kind of make it look like it's reflecting the environment. Um, so on a on a thing like this, where like it's basically a character in a white void. Um, there's not a lot of scenery, but if there was scenery, that would also kind of be reflected in the character's armor. So like if there was a blue sky, you know, you'd go and you'd get a blue for your sky and, you know, kind of add a little bit of that to the top where the sky would be reflected. Um, and you don't have to go crazy with this. Um, you know, typically you know, armor that's actually used in combat is not going to be like a mere shine, so you don't have to be like, you know, drawing the landscape reflected around a sphere or anything that crazy, unless it's like mirrored armor, or, you know, just really, really highly polished, and that's what you're going for. Um, but you definitely don't need to go that far for it to be kind of just convincing. I think these gloves should probably be a bit longer. Two. Okay. I'm also going to add in some kind of brown, I think, just for the leather straps and stuff, just so they kind of stand out a little bit more. A lot of the reasons why I have like the square brush is also to kind of do straps and things easily. And now I'm kind of just color picking around and trying to get everything to look more or less consistent.
Right. Um, and I guess we'll kind of make the gloves leather as well, just because those are a little bit easier to wear. Kind of another important thing to keep in mind is like this armor wasn't actually like designed for people to wear and walk around. It was designed for people whose weight was being carried by a horse. Um, and I know I'm getting kind of technical here, but like horses are stronger than people. Uh, so it doesn't make sense for someone who's like wandering around the countryside to again be wearing 200 pounds of metal. Um, and there's a lot of ways to kind of make someone look interestingly armored um, and formidable without, you know, putting 400 pounds of plate armor on them. So this is this is more metal than I would typically put on most characters that I draw, and you can kind of check out some other types of armor I've, I've attempted. And again, I'm not I'm not like an expert on anything really. I'm just kind of these are the things I think about when I'm drawing when I'm drawing characters. When I'm when I'm kind of designing the the look of a character, when I'm kind of figuring out how I want a character uh costuming to work if they're if they're supposed to be some sort of adventurer or someone who would wear armor. You know, I want to make sure the armor makes sense. Um both for the character and also like just physically does it make sense can it be worn can it be taken on and off can it um you know does it bend around the body and allow the body to exist inside it you know things like that um and would it be effective armor is it armor that that would actually ever be made for protection um so this is where you kind of go into like the argument of like the crazy like um like breast breastplates on female characters that have like um you know kind of like the the giant kind of cleavage kind of inset in them so i'm not saying that this is is a historical like there has never been armor designed like this because i mean there 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 definitely has been but it tends to be like less pronounced than this and also um, it tended to be more kind of ceremonial. Like, it's, this is, one, very expensive to do if you're a metal worker. It's just hard to make complex shapes in metal. Um, it takes just a lot of, of kind of man hours and, and effort. Um, and it also would provide worse protection because it's like, it wouldn't be like ineffective, but it would be difficult and expensive and less helpful. And also probably quite uncomfortable uh, to wear for any extended point of time. Whereas just kind of a nice... So like the inside of this breastplate would just be like... You know, basically like a, a cylinder with a little bit of extra space in the center... You know, which would be relatively comfortable, you know, if a character gained or lost a little bit of weight. Um, it wouldn't drastically change how the armor fit them, you know, and it would be adjusted with the straps on the side. You know, it's, it, it's functional. It's functional armor. Um, for ceremonial, like, if, if you're thinking of, like, the character who's wearing the armor as, like, someone who's incredibly wealthy, doesn't actually fight very much, but just... Um, you know, has armor for ceremonial or, like, religious purposes, like, you know, a king or something that doesn't actually do much fighting, then just go nuts. Make their armor as nonsensical as you possibly can, because chances are they would, just to show um, how rich they were. That's where a lot of this nonsense comes from, too. Like... Like this guy. You don't add all that filigree and junk to your armor unless you want to show people how much money you've got to hire people who add all that filigree and junk to your armor.
All right. Another thing to keep in mind, if a character is wearing gloves, they'll make their hands a lot puffier. So their hands will appear kind of oddly wide looking compared to hands without gloves. Especially if the gloves are made out of a hefty material like thick leather or something like that. Um, if you want kind of an idea, I'd suggest going and get some like some of the gloves that like construction workers use or something like that. The big kind of thick yellow leather gloves. And just kind of like looking at how big those make your hands and and um, just from like a you can get those at like Home Depot or wherever Walmart probably as well. All right. I kind of forgot to do his greaves earlier, so I'm just gonna kind of rough those in really quick. Um, so my thinking on these is there's just like a single metal plate on the outside of otherwise like normal leather shoes or leather boots. So basically like shin guards kind of. Okay. All right, so now we're pretty well kind of rendered out the armor. So now you might see this giant hole we have for the shield. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about this too. Um, so I, I feel like I see a lot of shields in fantasy that are like these giant just like 18 feet tall walls of metal and almost no shield like that has ever existed um shields are usually made primarily of light materials like wood occasionally reinforced with thin pieces of metal like a fully metal shield would not really cushion impact as well as a wooden one does um, you probably see a lot in like, uh, I want to say like Viking movies, the shield like breaks when it gets hit real hard. Um, and it's kind of designed to do that. Like it's designed, the shield is designed to break before your arm does. Um, cause if you have something that's too durable, you know, you can just hit it with something really heavy, like a, like a mace or the, the pommel of a sword or something and just shatter the arm that's holding it. And then the shield's useless. Um, you also want something that's light enough that you can, like, you know, move around to, like, deflect, you know, blows coming from different directions relatively easily. Um, so most shields used on foot are kind of probably smaller than this. Um, with a few exceptions and specific types of military uh, specific types of militaries. Um, a lot of the longer shields, like the ones that are like this big, like kind of shaped like this that you've seen, I think those are primarily, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but those are primarily used for like mounted combat. So like have your little person here and that kind of protects the side of the horse and, and stuff like that too. Alright, so shields, mostly wooden, 
with a little bit of metal reinforcement kind of holding it together and making it a little bit stronger. So I'm just kind of I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a clipping mask and I think that's lagging my computer so I'm just gonna close that. Yeah, my my poor potato computer doesn't like trying to do too, too, too many things at once. Um, so I'm kind of getting an idea of where the pieces of wood are, and then I want to kind of think out where the metal reinforcements are. So maybe we'll have a band here at the top. That just kind of holds everything together. Um, and then maybe like just a small disc in the center like this um, and we kind of want this to be relatively flat looking or, or kind of like bowed around so like the front of the shield would be shaped something like um, Front of the shield would be shaped something like this, and this metal piece would just kind of rest on it like that. So we want kind of like a subtle shift as it goes around the shield. Something like that. So there we go. Um, now I'm kind of adding some color because um, shields are usually like painted for like heraldry purposes. So I'm just going to do a, like a quick simple green pattern and I'm going to kind of break up the silhouette of the shield a little bit for the planks. Like, most shields probably wouldn't actually have this happening to them because they'd be like newer or more maintained, but it just kind of makes it look a little bit more um, used. And I kind of want this to read as like a white. Um, so I'm going to pick kind of like a, a, a light gray, and that way I can still add some highlights. And there'd be more kind of structural stuff behind the shield. So like on the other side of this shield, you know, um, there might be some metal stri strips, just thin metal strips that kind of adhere the wood together uh, a little bit harder. Um, it, it'd also probably be like glued, you know, or kind of like uh, laminated the planks together. Um, you'd also have like whatever straps which attach it to the person's arm. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a shadow this part of the shield at kind of the bottom and also to kind of this side because the shield is also kind of curving like I mentioned like that way um, but also like long wise so it's kind of like this is a profile shape kind of like that where it kind of bends around
All right. Oh, thanks, Faye. And I'm just going to throw some quick highlights on the feet. Right. So now I'm just going to create another layer um, to try some things out um, just because I'm not sure how they're going to look. So I want to kind of add some extra shadows. So I'm going to set this layer to multiply. Um, and I'm just going to get like a light kind of grayish color. And I feel like, like a grayish purple usually works for this. Just to kind of add in some more shadows here and there. I'm going to go ahead and create a clipping mask so I don't go outside the lines. Um, and here I'm just kind of reinforcing the direction of my light. And you can do this a lot earlier in the process too to kind of start your lighting. Um, and that just like tinge of purple. Also just, I don't know, it does it does something. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It, it does a little something, gives a little bit built a little bit more pizzazz. Might go a little bit darker. There. I went a little too far there. All right. That worked, so I'm going to go ahead and just merge it down to save space. I had too much of a shadow here, and it was making this look super um, thick. So I might actually... Or like it's been dinged up a little bit. Add some cut marks here and there. Okay. Um, and now I think. I'm going to try to add like a sigil or uh, some kind of emblem. I don't know the exact right word for that uh, to this shield. So I'm creating another layer. Um, I'm turning my, my brush back to 100% opacity. I'm just grabbing 100% opacity brush. Um, I'm going to grab something that I can see. We'll go with white. And I am going to, um, I'm going to turn on symmetry real quick. Um, just kind of draw this all right so I'm going for like some antlers something vaguely antler like something like that I'm going to go ahead and turn off symmetry. Oops, sorry. Okay. And I'm going to move this because um, the shield isn't perfectly centered anymore. So I'm just going to scooch this to look more centered. Okay. And just like we did at the beginning of the video, I'm going to go above it, 
create a clipping mask. Um, and then I'm going to kind of try to make this look like it's just um, like raised on the metal. So I'm going to get my neutral metal color and I'm going to kind of color over it with that. And kind of add highlights where the light would hit. As best I can figure out where those would be. Um, get a darker color and kind of add shadows where those would be cast. Right. Then I'm going to go below that original layer and just kind of create where the sh shadows would be cast a little bit. And there, that's kind of subtle, but here we go, and I can just kind of collapse this down. Then if I want, I can take this, Control-Alt, and like drag another one up. Ah! For some reason my computer is like lagging a lot while I'm trying to do this and I'm not sure why. Oh, that's probably why. And I'm just going to kind of move this to put one kind of on his chest. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to kind of see this a little, a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to scale it down. Try that. Okay, and the shape of the surface this is going to be over is a little bit different, so I need to kind of readjust. Um, the the values and stuff. So like this is going to be almost entirely in shadow, and this side is going to be a lot generally lighter, and probably have like some really bright almost white highlights where it kind of catches the, the light And kind of the same over here, we want to kind of 
add shadows where those would fall. And obviously we have this part here, which would actually, you know, go behind the plate. So we're just going to erase that out. All right. And then we'll merge that down. Okay. Kind of thin this plate up a little bit. All right. Looking over this, I think the weakest spot is these shoes, so I'm just going to tighten those up a little bit. Add a little bit more kind of highlights here and there. And then I think I'm going to call it good. throw some really dark into like the deepest crevices here and there. All right, um, and there you go. Uh, that's how I paint armor. Um, and again, if you want to do something more elaborate, um, something more detailed, or just like armor that like a wealthier person has, you just do the same thing, um, but just more more steps, basically, or spend more time on each step. Um, but if you just want a character, you know that's wearing some armor, looks like it's made of metal. Um, this is a good way to approach that. Um, also, if you're doing like a scene and you have a bunch of characters, you probably don't want to spend 450 years detailing every bit of armor on every single character. Um, and this is kind of a good way to kind of quickly get the look of armor um, without spending hours and hours and hours like hand shading every single detail. All right. Um, so I hope that was helpful or entertaining or something. Um, hope you all enjoyed watching. Um, if you want to see more of my work, I've been drawing characters like this. Uh, well, not exactly like this. Different characters. Pretty wide variety. Um, every single day for the last... 20 some days um, and posting them on my Instagram uh, and Facebook. So you can check those out on Instagram and Facebook at Anthony James Rich Art. Um, if you want to help support these characters um, and get some 
uh, some goodies here and there. Um, you can support me over on Patreon. Um, I'm also thinking of starting to do some kind of um, stream sponsor or like paint over tutorial type thing where you could like through Patreon at, at some level um, like pick a topic for one of these streams. So you could have like an art question like how do, how do I draw armor? Um, and I can make a video about it. Um, kind of a, a rambling one like I'm doing now. Um, or if you wanted to send me artwork, I could do a video paint over um, or something like that. So kind of open-ended. So um, basically, if people are kind of want help with art or if people just want to see me draw some random thing um, and maybe there'll be like a limited number of slots and it'll be a little bit lower than my normal commission prices or, or something. I don't know. Haven't worked out the details, but if you're interested in something like that, definitely talk to me um, and I can I can set it up. I haven't quite decided on an appropriate kind of price point for that yet um, either. So I'm still I'm still thinking about all that stuff. Um, so let me go ahead and in there. Um, Oh, I'll also mention uh, for Patreons at the $5 collector level or above. Uh, let me switch to my face cam real quick. All right. So this is the, sorry, is the sticker reward for the month of July. So you can still get these through the end of July for just $5 through Patreon. Um, it's a little Glebrizu demon from D&D. But it's the most adorable Glabrizu pinch puggle. So you can get your little pinch puggle sticker. Um, through the end of this month, $5 over on Patreon. Um, and I think that's it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a lovely week. Probably won't stream again until the weekend sometime. Um, so until then, have a good one. Uh, keep drawing. Check me out all those places I just said. Um, yeah. So see you next time. Bye.